So with diatom, it's it's a, a kind of the, my Japanese tendencies are obviously the most pronounced. And it's a project which is very subtractive in nature. There's a, a constant reflection on what can be removed from the equation and still arrive at like, producing wine. And, and I think you see that in a lot of things in life with chefs and artists and musicians, authors. It, instead of like how big your book is or how many colors are on the canvas or how many components on the plate, there's a, you, not always, it, it's not better or worse, but sometimes there's a path of more and more minimalistic, how can you have more impact with fewer words, how can you have more impact in a musical score with fewer notes, you don't have to ram every note that you know in a bar of a guitar solo, you know, you can be a little bit more selective. And so that's really the core part of the genesis of diatom, coupled with my wanting to demonstrate the San Rita Hills in a very, very pure fashion, much like I do with the wine called Enox in Melville, that kind of gave birth to this being its own project. And the, the ocean influence in our Appalachian is, is paramount. So the, we're surrounded on two sides by the Pacific. It's always windy, foggy, the soils are like the beach, and it's very much a marine situation. And I think that marine influence is seen to the wines as well, especially without the distraction of other um, wine interpretation or wine imposed, wine maker imposed things like stirring or mallow or oak or thyme and barrel or whatever. And uh, so um, these, these wines, all the diatom wines for the past seven years, have been raised the exact same way, so um, very, very cold for men. Um, so gently pressed, short lengths of hose, chilled overnight, the juice, gravity fill, short lengths of hose into stainless tanks, fermented very cold in our refrigerator, which is kind of three times the size of this room. Um, and uh, long fermentation cold, uh, mallow is blocked, which is critical, and I need all that malic acid edge to counter the alcohol. It's like a base and treble game, savory, sweet, hot, cold, whatever. It's like that, I love exploring that gradient difference and tension between different components and how they, they need each other and rely on each other. Uh, and no stirring, of course. Um, and then uh, early bottling. So the 2011s were bottled first week of April and end of March. And then the 2010s, same deal, the year before. And so they've been bottled for a little bit longer. Um, in the first five years, the, the wines were uh, designated by conventional Western names, Claude Pepe, Huber, Babcock. And um, going into 2010, I wanted to take things one step further with sincerity and, and site description. And so instead of just putting a vineyard name on it, um, I wanted something more pure. Very coincidentally, when I had those tendencies, the three sites I'd been working with ended. The relationship ended for different reasons. It was all amicable, but for different reasons. And so I found myself jumping into scenarios and working with parcels, some of which I've worked with for a really long time, others were newer, um, but it was this new opportunity for, you know, instead of coming out in 2010 with three different or four different new names, <laughs> um, I thought, wow, here's my chance to, like, assign a, a name to a very specific parcel. It's not like this vineyard, it's like this acre within this vineyard is now called Mia, is now called Hamon, and I'll describe the names in a sec. And so, for some clients that have been behind me for a while, they're like, whoa, bro, are you fucking dropped off the deep end and, and all these fanciful things, or are you just coming up with these names because you're some Japanese good? And, um, and really, it's a lot more sincere than that. It, it's, it, and, and what's cool is that even after just two years now, people are already making reference, especially after you have the 2011 Hamon. Like, even saying the word is like, oh, okay, it's no weirder than Huber or Babcock or Claude Pepe. <laughs> they're just names. And, and I deliberately chose names which are very personal. Um, but also not crazy Japanese names either. I mean, you know, they're not like super weird, hard to pronounce. They're easier than most of the other ones. Um, and so Mia is the first one. Mia means beautiful night. Um, that first character is beautiful. The other one's night. Mia. And uh, and Mia, the the it's a really special parcel of mine. Um, it's up in the hills and near Mount Carmel and Sea Smoke. It's about 20 years old. And Mia is an artist friend of mine who works with steel. She's half Japanese, half Russian. And she, through steel, word polishing, sanding, solvents, fire, explores gradient different steel. Ever steel is like this two-colored horizon-looking thing. It's all the same way. She was raised in a temple in Japan, so she's very monastic and does the same thing all over, all day long. Um, and she's really edgy and urban and tattoos, and she's cool. And so um, she kind of inspired me without her even knowing it to like do diatom in the first place. So I thought it was a great opportunity for me to kind of quietly just kind of say thank you to her through this parcel. Hamon is about a mile away to the east of Mia. Um, Hamon means clouds or fog or smoke, waves. And um, 
And if it's a parcel in the clone that I knew would be a little more curve, um, curvaceous, a little more decadent in style, much like a wave or a samurai sword, so that the discoloration of steel is also going to happen. And so um, it's a, uh, working with this fruit, historically I knew it would kind of give, be more luxurious, be a little bit more curvy and more like that in my head. And so that's, that's how that parcel was named, Hanlo. And uh, in here, too, it's an interesting study of, of picking parameters, because in my estimation, both of these wines came off when they were ripe and ready to be picked for different reasons. Yet the alcohol is quite disparate, and because of the nature of the year, 2010 and 11 were long, late years, and certain vineyards just didn't get as ripe as I sometimes operate with diatom, which is always extreme, you know, kind of by design, and uh, there's a good deviant part of me, where I, I love being very pure and honest and calculated, but there's still a little twisted part of my head where I like to kind of just be, you know, have that. So, um, so the, the Hamo in both vintages, even though they're cold years, it, is kind of more like historic diatom. Historic is an extreme word for a set of the previous diatom. Um, whereas the Mia and the Hanashinobu here is, is kind of is neat because it shows different different voices of, of appellation. Uh, 